Hi there, it's your friendly OCSB Learning Technologies consultant here. Um, and we're here to look at an overview of Google Drive from a student view today. Um, this would be applicable to uh, a Gmail um, in a lot of cases in terms of the flow of Google Drive. And if you are an employee of the OCSB, a lot of these tips and tricks would be applicable as well. Um, but for the view today, I'm starting at the student portal. Um, and on the student portal, we have our top banner, which with a lot of Google tools, and I'm going to click on Google Drive. And when I get into Google Drive, um, again, um, there should be a lot of typical things that are set up that you're seeing. Uh, in here, you'll see that the student folders are set up by Hapara. So when your teacher says, go to your Google Drive Hapara folder, this is what they mean. Uh, so this will be set up at the beginning of the year with your school code, the year, your class code, um, and it will not look exactly like this. This is just a training class uh, for myself. Sometimes people come in and they default to the priority. And so they see kind of a, a view kind of like this, where you have some uh, recently added files that Google has kind of shown you that should be something that we might look at in an order. Um, they have their own sort of way of doing that. Um, a lot of people like to default to just their drive and you can look at that and you can change that by yourself um, by going to the settings and settings on there. So we went to the cog or the gear and then in here um, under general, you, there is some suggestions as to make priority my default homepage. It shouldn't be your default because I my experience is that you would come in and check that off yourself. Um, and then you can see there are other options as well, such as if you're uploading from a computer or from your yeah your hard drive into Google Docs, it will change it automatically. So you can flip that on, as well as any offline mode. And there is a, a, a video in the OCSB how-to channel about using uh, offline mode and then Chromebooks in offline mode as well, so that if your um, internet is uh, not reliable at one moment in time or if you're in different situations where there's no internet, you could take advantage of that. That, but again, that is a separate video in OCSB to how to. Um, so then I'm just going to go back out of here and click on done and reset myself to what I see. So in Google Drive, there are so many different scenarios. It is it is it can be personalized based on on the user. So I'm just going to start with our folders that we would label as Hapara folders. So again, your student in elementary, um, your child, I should say, in elementary schools might have lots. They might have one for each drama and dance and and French and social studies, English, math, science, and so phys ed, so forth, and health, and a, and a couple more. Um, so they might have all this on their screen when they when they log into Drive at the beginning of the year. And again, of course, they would have existing um, documents from the previous years in there. So what I've done here is I'll start with one of these Hapara folders. Um, in this Hapara folder, uh, there's a couple things I could do to personalize it for uh, myself. You can see that the folder is red. So uh, sometimes teachers might get their students to do that. They might say to go, go to your red uh, Google Drive folder. Um, you can also use it as a system for yourself. If I right click on this item, I can get some options here where I can scroll down and change color. So a lot of people like doing this by changing color because they can say, OK, well, at least it's visually separating themselves. Um, and then you have a red folder, a green folder. You can continue doing this for whatever. Again, this is just a personal tool for yourself. And if you uh, if color doesn't mean anything to you, um, it's not something you have to do. It's just something that you could do. And of course, these are titles that might not make sense as well to uh, your child or to a student. Um, it should identify the class, so it'd be self-explanatory in that way, but it's not as easy. So if I scroll down again, right click, and on my, I'm using a mouse right now, but it could be a right click on a PC or, or Mac or on a Chromebook might be a two finger tap to bring up this, this option. I'm going to click on rename. And then here, this if this was my, uh, if this was my math class, I could just rename it math and you can see that it pops up and it does go always in full in terms of folders alphabetical right now in terms of how i set it up there are some ways to navigate across the top here um, i will if it is a folder that you like to use a lot there are a couple things that you can make it very pronounced and available for that student when you rename sometimes uh, by putting a number ahead of it or even um, a symbol like an exclamation mark. If I click on OK, it will bring it to the top when I'm sorting it via, you know, A to A to Z and so forth. So if I'm sorting up and down, 
the folders will still be there, but then we flip it around. But when I'm sorting it top down, um, you can see it's pointed up. That is okay. The owner will always show on the side here. The last modified is helpful. Um, sometimes you can sort to last modified by me. So that means the student wouldn't just be something that was last modified by anything anybody shared on the document. It would be available to anything that is specific to you. And then of course we have the file size as well. This view that you see right now, where it's just letters and, and uh, just folders and the names of the files is helpful for some because they like to see this information. As I go towards the cog, the gear setting, um, you can actually go right below and you see that you have a grid view. Um, if I click on that, you can see that it's actually flipped my folders across the top so you can still see the folders, but then I get little previews of these files. So that's helpful. Um, some people like this mode and some people like flipping back into that list view where they can see a little bit more information uh, they can hover it over it in terms of just seeing the owner and last modified and so forth. So that's totally up to you in terms of what you see. As your Google Drive gets bigger and bigger and bigger um, over the years, as the student continues to go on from grade to grade, it may not be as simple looking as this. You may have lots of files uh, moving forward. So the color uh, system might help. The adding a symbol or a number to the top might help as well as uh, different options such as starred. Um, so if math is something I know that I'm always gonna go to uh, and it's further down, I can also right click on it and click add to starred. Add to starred will show a star right there. And what it does, it kind of puts it on a favorite list right here. So if I click on starred, I can go in here and math is there. Again, if you star everything, um, this starred list will be very big and not really sortable. So it might be used for something that is uh, you're working on right now. And then you can always unstar it later when you're done with the file. Okay, so moving on to our next piece here, um, we get the shared with me. So these files right here that I'm pointing out right now, your Hapara files, are something that a teacher can share directly from Hapara. So to a student um, and to you as a parent, it really doesn't mean a whole ton. Um, aside from you just need to know where to go. So your Hapara Google Drive folder is what this is referring to. You can click on here, access your files. So if I click on math and I go in, you're gonna see files that are available um, that has been shared by your classroom teacher. So it, it could be most recent, you can kind of sort them, but in that, in that span, you can see what's been shared with them directly to um, your child and to your student through their account. So when I go back, um, what is helpful is that we need to end up getting files in there. So sometimes a, a student or a child can uh, create their own file. And uh, we need to make sure that if the child is going to create that and the teacher wants to get it back, we need to make sure that the file ends up in this uh, spot right here. So there's multiple ways to do this. So the way I always reset myself is to make sure that I'm in the file. So if I want to create a file, um, whether it's Google Doc or Google Slides or Google Drawing. Um, I always just get myself to reset and make sure that I'm in that file that I want to create it with, especially if it, it's going to end up going to um, my classroom teacher. So when I'm in that file, I open here and that's when I'll start to make sure that I am I can click plus new. If I'm in my drive and I click on plus new, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment, it's going to end up in this vast just Google Drive, my drive, and it's going to get very long and they're not going to be organized. Again, some people like searching them at the top, so uh, not always having them in that folder works for them for finding the files. But in terms of this example in which I'm showing you, this is how your teacher would see it in a file if they are using their Google uh, files created by Hapara. So again, I'm going to go into the file and create new. And uh, in here, I'm going to bypass the file upload and folder upload just for a second. I'm going to click on new Google Doc. And this created item will have the same sharing permissions as a selected folder. So in this case, it's the, the child and the classroom teachers um, and then create and share. So it's always going to give you that message uh, when you open it up because that file is shared. The file, the folder is the, owned by the student and shared with the teacher. So I can give it a, a title and work on the doc. And as I look at that, it's going to load in and save. And you can see that it's now in this file. So I just gave it a title, nothing creative there. 
then I don't have to do anything about moving it. So I'm going to reset to my drive and open up another doc here. So again, I'm not in a folder now. I'm going to click a new Google slide. It's going to open it up. It's going to call it untitled. I always recommend giving it a title right away because otherwise we're going to have a vast amount of untitled presentations in our Google Drive. I'm going to give this um, tutorial test. And I'm going to um, just go back to my Google Drive and let it load in and because it's saving right now. It might be a few moments. And there's the tutorial test. It is not an issue that I've saved it here now looking at my tutorial. Um, I just need to know there's multiple ways. If it needed to be in math, there's a couple things I could do. I can always click off. And when I click on once, it highlights a little bit blue. It's hard to see here. When I click on once, I can actually click once, wait a second, and then click again and drag it. I can bring it up here and I can drop that into my math folder. You can see that it highlights blue. I drop it in. It's going to do that same message again. Again, it's just shared between your, your child and uh, your classroom teacher. What if it was this um, icon, this item right here? I'm going to, uh, instead of just clicking on it once and dragging it, you can right click on it and click move to. And when I click move to, depending on where it is, it might show up as recent um, and how complicated the drive already is. I can click on here, make sure it's highlighted, or I can double click and go into the folder. Um, I'm going to click move. It's going to move. You're going to get that same message again. And the last piece that it's not necessarily Google Drive, but if I'm in a Google Doc um, or a Google Slide, I can always look at the top and move the document right next to the title. And I can also start there in the moment, which is, which is great. The last piece I'm going to tell you about is the Shared With Me. So in the Shared With Me, it's something that maybe like they're working on a project potentially with another child in their class and that child creates a document like I just showed you and uh, goes into file share with me. So what that student would have done would the, in their Google uh, Slides or Google Doc, they would have gone in and clicked share. And in that share, they would have typed that name in here um, to be able to look at that. So they would have typed the first name dot last name at ocsbstudent.ca. Uh, the student should also get an email notification, but there are things in here that I look at and I'd say, okay, this activity um, was uh, shared with me via, uh, via another uh, child or so forth, and I want to make it go into my drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click on it and it says add shortcut to drive. So it means it's still going to belong to the owner. It's, I'm really just going to try to organize it. I'm still going to be able to access it. I'm still going to be able to search it up top. And I'm going to add shortcut to drive. So when I add that shortcut to drive for maybe it's this, uh, the reading program, it could be a folder. Again, right click, add shortcut to drive. I'm going to choose where I want that. So I'm just going to cho choose my drive. When I go back to my drive, we're going to see that the lesson one PDF here is now there with a little icon that has that that is a shortcut, a little arrow there. So that's one piece that we can do. And then uh, I did mention the search and drive feature as well. So some people in terms of their own workflow, uh, just trying to find it. If you go in here and you uh, search tutorial, you can search by people, you can search by file. So there's tutorial tests. A lot of people like to go there. Um, sometimes people know it's called tutorial or it's named tutorial somewhere along the line. That's why the naming is very important. Um, and they know it's a Google slide. So if I go back here and I bypass just hitting enter at that time, I'm just going to reset. So tutorial without hitting enter, um, it does show up some options, which is great. So I found it in this case, I don't need to, uh, move forward, but if you needed to, there are search options where I could say it's anywhere or any type of document, I can narrow it down. It says tutorial and presentation. And then I search and I'm only going to get documents that have tutorial and our Google slides in that case. So as we look through, um, we have our starred, we have our recent, which is helpful. When we click on that, it's things that I um, have been accessing as well as other people. Um, in terms of the documents. So a lot of people are going into the recent if it was something I knew I was working on yesterday as well. So this Google Drive overview um, is wasn't as quick as simple as we were hoping, but Google Drive is so vast 